It has been some time now since Elden Ring's first ever DLC, Shadow of the Erd Tree. Not like a lot of time, but time has certainly passed, and after completing this masterpiece, it has left me with the important questions of, is this it for Elden Ring? Is this the last new content we'll ever see for this game? How can they continue the story in future DLCs? These are all questions we're here to answer today. Sorta. Of. I just want to say I literally felt like Charlie from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia while making this. Like, you guys know the little meme? Yeah, your boy has a lot of ideas here, and I just want to get it all out, so I'm sorry if this all sounds like a jumbled mess, but I'm going to try to break it all down as best I can. Just to preface things here, this entire video is going to be pure speculation. Alright, I don't have any sort of definitive answers on new content, but I think there's still a lot to explore here in the story of Elden Ring, and today I have five ideas that I just wanted to kind of go over of what a second DLC for this game might look like, and how it would fit into the lore. For starters, I think it's important to explain why I even think we'll see more content in general. This is actually a topic that has floated around the community for quite a while, and a lot of people seem to be pretty adamant that this is the last DLC we'll ever see for this game. I think what most people are getting tripped up about is this interview where Miyazaki says, at this point there's no plans for another DLC release. But I think this end quote is also important to point out, where he says the story in his eyes is definitely not over with. And Dark Souls 3 kind of got the same treatment where they waited quite a while after the first DLC to drop a second one. As you can already tell, your boy is obviously on team jobs not done here. And my main reasoning behind that is from the man, the myth, the Miyazaki himself. Roll clip. As for Elden Ring, we still have several more things we want to do. Um, so this, getting this Goldie Award really, really encourage us. So this is back when From Software received the Game of the Year award for Elden Ring, and here he says two different things. He says he still wants to grow past Elden Ring and make even better games, but at the same time, he's saying that they still have several different things planned for Elden Ring, and this was all the way back in December of 2022. Since the awards show, the only real new additions we've seen to the game are the PvP Colosseums and Shadow of the Erd Tree. So this right off the rip leads me to believe they at least have a few more ideas they pondered since release. Maybe they just haven't gotten around to it yet. In another more recent interview as well, he's also stated, and I quote, We don't have any current plans to make a second DLC or a sequel, but we definitely don't want to snuff out the possibility. With all this information, the only things we know for certain are that they don't have any current plans right now for a DLC, but in Miyazaki's eyes, there's still more to tell with this story. And who knows, man, people thought Dark Souls 3 was done, but then they rolled out another DLC too, like a year and a half later. Even if you're one of those people out there that think, nope, no way, there's absolutely no way they do anything more with this game, just humor me for a second here. I mean, you've already watched this far into the video, you might as well just hear your boy out the rest of the way. So Miyazaki has said he's not done with the story of Elden Ring, but that begs the question, why not just move on to the sequel and start fresh? Personally, I don't think we'll ever get a full sequel to this game. My main reasoning for thinking this is From Software typically never does sequels for their games, and also the lands between. Let's take the Dark Souls trilogy for an example. Each game is set in a different kingdom, but they all belong in the same world with the same story of linking the fire. The map of Elden Ring is presumed to be the entire world or universe of Elden Ring. For an Elden Ring 2 to make sense, it would have to be set in the lands between, and when I think about it, I really don't see them reusing the entire same map to tell a different story, and I also don't see them making up a whole brand new map and just saying, oh yeah, the lands between is over there, You just we're just over here now. Now I know some of you are probably slamming away at that keyboard right as we speak saying, dude, that's exactly what they did with this DLC, are you stupid? Are you dumb? Dislike. But like I said about the Dark Souls games, being on a much smaller scale helps them all fit under the same umbrella. Elden Ring is just already too big of a game as it is on its own. The addition of the Shadowlands worked because it's still a part of the Lands Between, but if they created an entirely new world with a story that carries the same weight as being an Elden Lord, I just don't see how they can both fit together. Like I don't know how you can tell this exact same Elden Ring story of runes and gods and consorts somewhere else. Did the Outer Gods just pack up and move cities? In terms of story, how could we be doing Elden Ring stuff? on a new world and not have it be affecting the lands between or vice versa. Also getting more into the story side of things, I really don't know how they'd carry enough of a story for an entire sequel unless there was some significant time jump, but I don't think that's what Miyazaki was intending anyways. When he says he wants to expand the story, I really think he means this story or time frame with this cast of characters. Okay, okay, so we've gone over why I think they're going to be adding in more content, but before we get into answering questions like what would a new DLC be, what would it look like, 
I just want to kind of go over what Shadow of the Earth Tree is so we can kind of know what the expectations look like for a new DLC. So Shadow of the Earth Tree is from software's biggest DLC to date in terms of content. Right off the bat, I don't necessarily expect a DLC 2 to be anything bigger than Shadow of the Earth Tree. I mean, this damn near felt like its own game in and of itself. But if there is going to be a DLC 2, I would at least expect it to be about the same size. At this point, the bar's been set, so if they do go the DLC 2 route, then they at least have to meet those expectations. And I don't think they'd have trouble with that at all. It would just of course take some time. Shadow of the Erd Tree also introduced a plethora of new characters, whether that's friendly NPCs like the followers of Mikola, and a variety of new bosses to face. NPCs are a big part of their storytelling technique, so I would most definitely expect a new cast of people to carry on the narrative in a DLC too. They added in an entirely new part of the map that's separate from the lands between, and it all seamlessly fits into one game with no overlap. You can just travel to and from at any point. This was honestly a really easy addition that helped further develop the lands between. And them just saying it was hidden behind a cloud on the map the whole time is honestly a really nice touch because it also just gives them opportunities to further add more stuff and just say it was under these clouds the whole time. I know what I just said earlier about all the new map stuff, but it's implied that this is where death washes up from the lands between. So this is still linked to the base world and still follows the grand overarching lore of Elden Ring. It doesn't change up any of the story, which brings me to my next point that the story of the DLC builds off the original narrative, but doesn't change or affect the base game in any way. This is a very important point because they're still developing the story but not changing its outcome in any way. The main story of Elden Ring was its own closed loop, but this DLC just gave us extra backstory on questions that were left unanswered. Mainly what's up with Mikola and a bit of Merica's backstory. This kind of spins me back to my other point of, if they made a whole new sequel game, it wouldn't be able to further explore this cast of people like Queen Merica and Mikola. They'd have to start new and I don't think FromSoft is quite ready to leave these characters yet. Okay, 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 okay. Folks, that has been a bunch of rambling from your boy for sure, but I just had to kind of set the stage here a little bit. Some of these honestly might just be some straight up crack pipe dreams, but it's always fun to speculate on lore. So without wasting any more time, let's just get into how I think they could weave DLC 2 levels of content into this already great story. For starters, I think the Gates of Divinity from the end of Shadow of the Earth Tree seems far too important to just be a background piece for a fight. This is a place where people ascend to godhood, as we see Merica doing it in the trailers and Mikola in the DLC. The story gets a little jumbled up here in a lot of different places, such as how was Merica even chosen for this in the first place? Why did Mikola have to strip away his body to complete the ritual when Merica didn't? How did Mikola complete the ritual while Merica is still the vessel for the Elden Ring, depending on your ending? One thing's for sure, this place left more questions than answers, and I do not think we're done here at all. I don't think they would directly connect this to the next DLC because you shouldn't have to buy both for one to make sense. It would be insane for someone to play a second DLC without playing the first one anyways, but it would be more insane if you had to buy the first one for access to the next DLC or something like that. But I will say, in terms of a significant landmark, I think it's definitely got more of a story to tell. There's a theory out there that suggests these gateways were built by the horn set due to their devotion to divinity, and the architecture matches their practice of fusing the shaman people together, as we can see from the trailer footage. So I don't necessarily think these are like a divine, god-made structure, you know what I'm saying? Maybe this isn't the only gates to divinity out there. Maybe they built more somewhere, or maybe different outer gods have different gateways that we'll end up seeing later down the line. Who knows, we could very well see a DLC where we ourselves ascend the steps to godhood. I know they have rules about only Empyreans being able to take that mantle, but I mean, we're, we're already Elden Lord. It feels like a natural progression if we were to ramp things up. And also this random obscure line from Ronnie where she says, Be it a lord be it a god. But should ye fail to become aught at all? I'm pretty sure that's Ronnie. It might be Melina. I think it's Ronnie. But she, in Empyrean herself, says we have the choice to become a lord or a god, but we haven't yet seen that choice to become a full god in the game. Next, for a while, it's been speculated that the Greater Will abandoned the Lands Between and has been gone for quite some time now. This is further backed up with the revelation that Matir, Mother of Fingers, is a child of the Greater Will, one of the first stars sent down to the Lands Between, and it's the true conduit for interpreting the Greater Will's wishes, but Matir hasn't communicated with it in quite some time. This basically implies that the Fingers have just been winging it this whole time, like Merica hasn't had any sort of guidance from the Greater Will. So we could see a DLC that shows the Greater Will finally coming back to try and reestablish the order it intended when the Elden Ring first shattered, or we could see a DLC that shows us why the Greater Will hasn't been involved for so long. 
The Greater Will is just one outer god who made the Elden Ring which governs the principles of the entire world. It's implied that this is the overarching god figure, but during your playthrough there's multiple other outer gods that try to take control for themselves. And they even try to take their own vessels such as the Formless Mother through Moog or the Frenzied Flame through us in a separate ending. What if we got a new outer god introduced that tried taking over? It could still be in a completely brand new part of the map like the first DLC, but if they went this route they'd be able to introduce a whole new cast of characters with a whole new vessel promise consort dynamic and it still wouldn't interfere with the narrative that they already have running. This theory more lends itself towards a sequel level of content and like I said earlier I don't fully believe this is the route Miyazaki wants to take with this game but it's an idea that they could for sure elaborate on. To fit more in lines with the DLC too, there's multiple other entities of great power that pop up during the story that appear to have the power of outer gods but it's never explicitly mentioned that they are. Some of these figures would be the fell god that the giants worship, the god devouring serpent that's at Volcano Manor with Rikard, or the ancient dragon god that fled during the reign of Placidusax, or there's a big topic of debate that the moon is its own outer god. I mean, any of these figures could also be picked up to have their own story further elaborated upon. Speaking of Rikard though, I mean, this dude is 1000% still alive down in Volcano Manor. This seems like something to left on the back burner in case they ever did find use for him later down the line. I mean, very few bosses ever survive an encounter with the old tarnished Elden Lord, you know what I'm saying? There has to be a deliberate reason why he's still kicking around. It could also be something like Shadow of the Earth Tree, where we commune with the body at Moog's Palace. We might have to interact with the Rikard head in some way to trigger new events. Besides just interacting with the head though, I mean the record fight could be one of those little prerequisite fights, kind of similar to how you had to fight Moog and Radon for the first DLC. Who knows? Lastly, I think they could do more with adding new Empyreans that have the potential to be gods. I've tried to do some digging on this and I'm about 90% confident that Mesmer is a brand new Empyrean character who's the son of Merica and Radagon. He explicitly calls Merica his mama, but doesn't say anything about Radagon. I'm mainly just going off the distinct red hair at this point. The real point I'm getting at though with this Mesmer guy is he's insanely powerful and he just so happened to always be here but out of the way of the first game. We could see this same idea played out with another Empyrean character that's just always kind of been there except they're actually trying to take over for themselves now, who knows. Well folks, that was my five ideas and I don't really have any more so that's gonna about do here for this video. Like I said, this is all just pure thoughts and speculation. Who really knows what From Software will cook up next but we definitely have quite a while to wait so let's just also enjoy some Shadow of the Earth Tree while we can. I know the first DLC only just released but it's always fun to look to the future and speculate ahead. If you yourself have any sort of theories on if they'll do another DLC or a sequel or neither, comment down below and let me know what you think. I'd definitely love to hear it. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Your boy really appreciates it. I also have a few other Shadow of the Earth Tree videos posted up on my channel, so if you're interested in those, make sure to go check those out. Alrighty, folks, it has been real. This has been Lunar, and welcome to Bound.